Every every like couple of years or so, one of my friends says like vesselfinder.com exists. It shows me every picture of boats ever made. And like, did you know this, Matt? And this is because I used to work on boats. And they always come to me and say, Matt, can you explain to me how this works? And then I have to explain to them what the difference between a boat and a ship is. Ships have boats on them. <laughs> now that we know that, we can move on here. Back to the main story. How does Vessel Finder get all this data? Satellites? Does every ship have a satellite uplink on them? Well, no. In the 90s, AIS, Automated Identification Services, was, de was developed so ships could communicate in an ad hoc local area network with no center point. More recently, folks have tried to use satellites to snoop on messages from AIS, but none of those are fully rolled out. This is actually a mixture of ground stations listening on AIS frequencies and vehicles repeating each other in a giant mesh network across the entire ocean. But let's go back to the localized view. Each ship is barking to the other ships what its ship ID, heading, location, speed, and stuff are. You just add one of these little devices to your ship or your boat or whatever, and suddenly you can shout to the world where you are. So now you may be wondering, wait, does that little box have a GPS and a compass and stuff in it? Didn't the boat already have that stuff? That little box doesn't have much in the way of sensors. It just talks to an antenna. But the National Marine Electronics Association came up with a great answer back in the 50s. Enter NMEA 01883. It's this great protocol straight out of the 1950s designed to make all of your devices interoperate over a serial bus. USB was, of course, developed in the 90s. NMEA was developed in the 50s. So not so much universal. Also, it is very proprietary. <laughs> but in the end, it's just a serial protocol. With a bit of trial and error, you can wire up something that works. So I have these devices connected on a serial bus configured to 4800 baud. That's the convention. Now, how do I get them to talk? NEMA strings. Whenever a device has something to say, it just shouts it out. Every sentence must be new line delimited, have a restricted set of characters, start with a dollar sign, followed by a five character ID, end with a checksum. If two devices try to say something at the same time, just use checksums for that. If the device had something important to say, it will repeat it. <laughs> so here we are with our NEMA strings, and everything is good. Did I mention that every NEMA string has a max length of 82 bytes? We'll get to that later. Our little box listens for NEMA strings for all of the other parts of the ship, the GPS, the compass, the nav system, and it blats out messages to all the nearby ships. What do those messages look like? Another fixed width custom binary format. Fortunately, the little box will parse them and repeat the contents as NEMA strings. Well. NEMA-like strings. They decided to change the leading dollar sign to a bang for no apparent reason. Also, they didn't so much parse the original message as transcoding using AIS ASCII 6, which is a way of encoding binary data in ASCII, but avoiding using comma or star so that they could create custom messages for this purpose. Also, they needed to handle multi-part messages since 82 characters cannot encode 256 bytes all the time. So those first couple numbers are sequence IDs. Do modern ships still do all of this? Well, actually, they replaced the serial bus with an Ethernet network, and they use UDP for the broadcast, one message per packet. But other than that, yes. So to get this picture on a ship, each ship's GPS compass nav system are sending individual NEMA sentences over serial UDP. Each ship's AIS, AIS <laughs> box is packing those into a binary protocol and <laughs> shouting it out over the local radio. Each ship's AIS box is repacking the binary it heard onto NEMA with nested binary encoding and repeating it over serial UDP. Some dedicated monitor on each ship is consuming the AIS over NEMA feed and drawing a subset of this map to get to, and then to get it to Vessel Finder, the story only changes slightly. Each ship's GPS compass nav systems are sending individual NEMA messages over serial UDP. Each ship's AIS box is packing those up in a binary protocol, shouting it out over the local radio. Some base stations are listening for the binary protocol and repacking it into NEMA with nested binary encoding and sending that out over either serial UDP. Some worked station attached to the internet is parsing that and repacking it into an HTTP post, which vesselfinder.com is collecting for all those requests and serving this up to you. Wow. So how far forward do we carry these things? Most GPS devices today still speak NEMA. Your phone is doing it to other parts of your phone. And this is where I would have questions for 40 seconds. <laughs>